Arizona State Sun Devils football is kicking off tomorrow night against the NAU Lumberjacks. We're here to talk about everything you need to know about the game and making some bold predictions on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. My name is Richie Bradshaw. I am your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thank you guys so much, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. This podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, if you want to check us out on a visual platform. Of course, wherever you do get those podcasts, so make sure you hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you get an update every time we post new content. To stay in touch with all the content, make sure you're following me on Twitter at richiebrad 36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Real quick, I do apologize that this episode is getting out a little later than usual. I recorded this episode twice last night, and it did not record the sound for either. So I had to do a little bit of playing around with it, and it appears that it is working again. So we are going to go ahead and hop in, and if I have to record it a fourth time, then so be it. But let's go ahead and jump into the NAU football game against Arizona State in Tempe, Arizona. Guys, it's finally here. We finally have Arizona State Sun Devils football. It's It's been a really long wait with a lot of anticipation because of all the changes that are going on with the program, all the losses, both to the transfer portal and to the NFL and eligibility. It And new new coaches too, both an offensive and defensive coordinator coming in. There's There's so much change. That is both exciting and terrifying at the exact same time. It's going to be so much fun to finally get into everything. But let's go ahead and take a look at the starting depth chart for the team that was officially released uh, yesterday. So looking, there, there's not too many surprises throughout. Uh, the starting quarterback, Emery Jones, we all knew that was coming. He was announced as a starter a little while ago feels like he was always going to be the starter the moment he came to Arizona State, though. And Paul Tyson will be his primary backup. Trenton Bourget will be the third string. But again, Emory Jones being the starter is nothing we did not expect. Looking at the running back, again, I don't think there was too many people who would disagree with this. Xavier Valade running back one. Daniel Nagata running back two. George Hart the third running back three. And Tevin White running back four. Not any surprises. Valade is a two-time thousand-yard rusher, a very productive guy during his time at Wyoming, and somebody that Arizona State is anticipating can put together another really good year in the desert. Daniel Nagata, meanwhile, will be the running back two, which don't be fooled, is a massive role for the Arizona State Sun Devils backfield. And you can definitely anticipate him to definitely get 100 carries on the season, not in this game, not in this game. But he he's going to be heavily involved, the same way that Chip Trianum and, and Nagata were over the last couple of years. Uh, looking at the receivers, at the X spot is Brian Thompson. Behind him are Andre Johnson and Zeke Freeman. At the H spot will be Geo Sanders with Cam Johnson and Javen Jacobs backing him up. And then finally at the Z will be Elijah Badger with Charles Hall IV and Chad Johnson Jr. backing him up. Brian Thompson at the X receiver. I feel like this was something that I kind of saw coming was Thompson being the quote unquote top guy here. Thompson's the most experienced of all the receivers. He is going into his second season with Arizona state. And while he didn't do and hardly anything last year, didn't get in the end zone, had exactly 10 yards to catch. He, he still has that capability to be a deep threat option for Arizona state. And that's what I anticipate him being able to do this year. So seeing him as the, you know, quote unquote X receiver, Anything but a surprise. Definitely expect to see a lot of Andre Johnson as well. Geo Sanders being a senior was probably one of the things that ended up getting him the nod over some of the other guys as he is a little more established with the program. And then Cam Johnson being his primary backup, also not too much of a surprise given his experience during his days at Vanderbilt. And then Elijah Badger as the Z. Look, this guy's got speed for days. He showed it off during practice, uh, both in the spring 
and during the fall as we were getting ready to get the season started. Not a surprise that Elijah Badger is going to be prominent in this offense. They're probably going to be hoping that he can be that receiver that they love to take that deep shot to. I would anticipate him to be that guy. Looking at the Y slash H slash fullback tight end spot, Case Hatch is the number one guy. He's definitely the fullback for the team. Your tight ends are Jalen Conyers and Messiah Swinson. Uh, Swinson, of course, being that transfer from Mizzou, who's built like a power forward at six foot eight, 255 pounds. Conyers, a guy I really like, who I feel is going to have a very sneaky, important role for the team this year. And Case Hatch, depending on if Arizona State would like to incorporate the fullback position can be a really nice asset for a team that is going to run the ball 30 plus times a game. The offensive line left to right is Isaiah Glass, uh, Ladarius Henderson, Ben Scott, Chris Martinez, and Des Holmes. Glass did end up beating out Emmett Bully for the left tackle spot, but expect Bully to be one of the most important backup offensive linemen. In fact, if they go heavy set, I would imagine he's probably your sixth offensive lineman there. Uh, and and then if Glass struggles, I, I mean, they brought in Bully, redshirt senior, to potentially be a guy to really uh, be, be able to push all the offensive linemen to play their best. Left guard, Ladarius Henderson, anything but a surprise. He's the best offensive lineman on this team and a guy who might have NFL future. Ben Scott, again, not a surprise at all. Played right tackle last year, kicking in the center. Could potentially see a really nice uh, swing for his career to just show off some like great overall versatility on the offensive line. And then at right guard and right tackle, Chris Martinez and Des Holmes, both transfers. Martinez coming from San Diego State and Des Holmes coming from Penn State. Both are expected to be plug-and-play starters for the team. This should be a rock-solid offensive line. Going to the defense now, uh, at edge rusher, you will have Anthony Cooper and uh, Joe Moore as your starters with Dylan Hall and Trevez Moore as the primary backups. Anthony Cooper finished, I believe, third on the team in sacks a year ago with three. Definitely showed off a lot of explosive athleticism. Not a surprise he was one of the starters. Joe Moore getting the nod over Trevez Moore is interesting to me. I feel like this is to maybe help get Trevez back into football shape, considering he missed the vast majority of last year with that ACL tear. And they, they're they probably going to want to ease him into the lineup, maybe put him on a snap count. but. Being able to bring him out for passing down situations as a fresh rusher could be a really good move for Arizona State. Looking at the interior, no surprises. Uh, Omar Norman-Lott, the starting defensive tackle with B.J. Green and Bamad Miller backing him up. We all know how good Omar Norman-Lott is. It, he's absolutely potentially the best player on this defensive line. B.J. Green is his primary backup. He's going to get on the field a lot. Do not... Do not be uh, fooled by the fact that he is, you know, quote unquote, second string. He is going to get on the field a lot as your leading sack artist from last year with five. Uh, At the nose tackle spot, this was a little bit of a surprise with uh, Tatala Pesafi edging out Nesta uh, Nesta Jade Silvera for the starting spot. I feel like part of this is because because Pesafi has been with the program significantly longer than Silvera has with Silvera being a transfer out of the University of Miami, Florida. They're both going to get heavily involved. I don't know how much Arizona State's going to rely on the nose tackle this year the way that they have in the past, but they have two really good options to go with. And then Robbie Harrison is also in that lineup as well as the quote-unquote third string. I anticipate he's going to get some snaps. I don't know how many, but they're going to want to get him involved. At the linebacker core, you have Connor Soley at the will, Kyle Soley at the mic, and Merlin Robertson at the star. So I, we definitely anticipated that Connor Soley was likely your third linebacker behind his brother Kyle and Merlin Robertson after the departures of Darian Butler to the NFL and Eric Gentry to USC via the transfer portal. Connor Soley has showed off some really nice upside, and I'm definitely excited for him. I feel like there were times last year where he looked better than his brother Kyle, and Kyle, mind you, paced the team and set, or not sacks, good Lord, This would be insane if it was sacks. He paced the team in tackles with 88 and was a very good linebacker. Definitely showed that sideline to sideline ability. I feel like Connor had sometimes shown off that he was better. And if you get that 
you know, brotherly competition between the two of them. That could be really nice for your program. Merlin Robertson, fifth year guy, has been a starter since his freshman year. We all knew this was coming. Captain for the team. Anticipate him to be basically the quarterback of the defense and be able to call everything out and set the defense up for the best success that they possibly can. Uh, looking in the secondary now, it is worth noting that both Tamarcus Davis and Jordan Clark will be out for this game due to respective injuries. So in their place, Roe Torrance and Ed Woods will be the top two corners on the outside with DJ Taylor lining up in the nickel. You will also have primary backups, Keon Markham, Mason Williams, and Corey Bethley for one of the nickel spots as well. So I feel like Roe Torrance was also a guy that we were anticipating was going to end up having a pretty nice role with the program. He's a big dude too at a six, uh, six foot three or six. Yeah. Six foot three. And just, just a really nice big body that the team is definitely going to want to get involved as much as they can. It's not a surprise that he ended up with a starting spot uh, over Keon Markham. But I, I also feel like Markham could have gotten that role based off of the fact that it, it appears that Arizona state with, went with a lot of veterans on the majority of their decisions for starting. So obviously row Torrance must've been pretty good. Uh, uh, Ed Woods, redshirt sophomore, they're going to be hoping to get some good out of him. Mason Williams, his primary backup is also a redshirt sophomore. So I, I would assume that they're both going to see pretty significant playing time. Uh, looking at safety now, Chris Edmonds gets the start and Kawan Markham gets the start. Uh, backups will be Willie Hartz, the third, Elijah Gamage, and Corey Bethley. This one is also interesting to me because I've been talking up Corey Bethley all offseason long. And he doesn't get the quote-unquote start for the team. But again, like a lot of these guys I've brought up, he is going to be on the field a lot. That dude is a playmaker. You don't just suddenly keep him off the field because he's not listed as a starter. Chris Edmonds getting one of the starts is awesome to see. He's a big body as well at six foot two with some ball hawking skills. He had four interceptions a year ago for Samford. He's going to be a really nice piece. Corey Bethley is going to be a really nice piece. And then Kwan Markham getting the other start. Not a surprise as a senior for the team. And he sh has shown off some really nice versatility as well. Uh, looking now at the special teams unit, Carter Brown did end up winning the job over Jace Feely. But with them being freshmen and redshirt freshmen, respectively, expect it to be an ongoing competition. If Carter Brown comes out and struggles, don't be surprised if Jace Feely is out on the field as well. Your kickoff specialist, punter, and holder will all be Eddie Zablicki. Anything but a surprise. I've talked up Eddie Zablicki for a long time now and expect him to take a really nice step forward in his second year with the program. Uh, kick return, punt return, also not a surprise. DJ Taylor being the guy. At both of those, Taylor showing off some really nice explosiveness as a freshman. If he's able to recapture that, you could potentially have yourself a difference maker at the return at the at the as oh my goodness as a return option for the team. And then uh, another thing I forgot to bring up is uh, Taylor is actually listed as a slot corner for the team. This is like his actual position, not just his kick and punt returner. So he's going to get some action actually on the field at his listed position. That'll be uh, fun to watch, essentially. Let's go ahead and hop into our first break now. When we return, we're going to pick up where we left off talking about some things that Arizona State needs to do in order to win this football game. But first, a quick word from our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week games. BetOnline is also your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action happening right now. BetOnline, where the game starts. As always, thank you guys so much for making us your first listen of the day. This podcast is free and available on all platforms. Getting back to our conversation, we're going to take a look at some, some keys to victory here for Arizona State. I got three on offense, three on defense, and then a player highlighted that Arizona State needs to watch for from NAU. On offense, 
this this goes with every game. Like th- this is not something that's going to be different throughout the year, but it's going to be incredibly important in week one to do to establish a rhythm. And that's mistake free football. You just cannot afford to be making lazy and borderline arrogant turnovers this year. You need to make sure that you are doing everything to the best of your ability, which is going to mean uh, just being smart with the football. So with Emory Jones, it's not taking unnecessary risks and uh, placing the ball in the opponent's hands. It's making sure that you're holding the onto the ball tight and not committing fumbles, which was something that Arizona State struggled with last year. It's going to be a lot of making sure that you are mentally ready for the season, especially because your season is going to start fast. Week two, you're going to play Oklahoma State. Week four, you're playing Utah. Like there's there's no room to have mess ups this early on. Week one, you need to come out and play nearly uh, flawless football. The second thing you need to do is just maintain that ground and pound mentality. This is a team that's going to be dominant in establishing the run all year long. Don't look for that to be any different this year. Uh, with with week one here against NAU, NAU is actually a really bad team against the run, and that's not necessarily going to change this year. So I would anticipate that Arizona State is going to come out and want to run the football as much as they possibly can. And then you want to take the occasional deep shot. You know, this is something that Arizona State has been known for for the last few years is, that, look, this isn't a team that's predicated off of the 40 to 50 yard chunk plays. But the Sun Devils do love to take that shot two to three times a game. Stay with that identity. It's working for you. You got a couple guys who can stretch the field like Elijah Badger and Andre Johnson. Don't be afraid to throw it down the field and just give defenses a reason to back off the ball a little bit. Defensive side of the ball, create a consistent pass rush. It's going to be difficult this year with the loss of Michael Matus to an ACL injury and with Jermaine Lole leaving via the transfer portal. It's going to be a lot, but you do have Trevez Moore coming back. You do have another season with Joe Moore and Anthony Cooper on the outside. Omar Norman Law is anticipated to take a really nice step forward this year. BJ Green hopefully can continue building upon his success. And your notes to tackle spot between uh, Pesafi and uh, Silvera can hopefully provide some really good stability on the inside, which can potentially lead to some, some really good run defense, which is what you're going to need this year. You also need your linebackers to show a lot of poise. You need these guys to be at the top of their game, especially Kyle Soley and Merlin Robertson. They're both captains for the team. They're both the most veteran established players for the team not just on defense, they need to be able to call out the plays. They need to be able to be the guys to set everyone up in position to do their assignments correctly. If they're playing well, the rest of the team should be playing well as well. Finally, make life as easy on the secondary as you possibly can. It doesn't help. You're already missing two of your top guys in the secondary with Davis and Clark being out. You still have a lot of young guys as well, like Mason Williams is going to be back there. You're going to be trying to get Ro Torrance as accustomed as possible to an early season starting role. DJ Taylor is going to need some work as well, considering he doesn't see the field as much. You got brand new safeties, essentially. There's just a lot of young guys back there or inexperienced guys as well. You need to make life as simple as you can. And that means having that pass rush collapse the pocket a little bit quicker force the quarterback to get the ball out a little bit faster and potentially making it so that these secondary guys can make some plays, maybe create some turnovers and build up some confidence for them. Cause there's going to be a lot of making sure that these guys are in a position to succeed. The one guy that I'm highlighting here for the sun devils to keep an extra eye on will be Kevin Daniels. De- uh, Daniels being the running back for NAU coming off an 1100 yard season. He's going to just be the absolute rock for that offense this year, not just in the running game, but just the total life of the offense. They're going to want to get him the ball in any and every way possible. I would anticipate he's going to be a 25 to 30 touch guy come Thursday night. They're going to want to get him the ball as much as they possibly can. They absolutely should. He is a great football player. All in all, you just got to make sure you cap him. If you're able to cap Kevin Daniels, you have a great shot 
to overall control and dictate the pace of this game and shut down whatever NAU wants to do. Hopping into our final breakdown. When we return, we're going to pick it up with my bold predictions and score predictions. Again, thank you guys so much for making us your first listen of the day. Now check this out. For your second listen, go to the Ultimate Pro Football Preview for 2022, an eight-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into one Ultimate NFL Preview. Search for Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast for you NFL fans. That's going to be can't miss. For me, a Baltimore Ravens fan, that is going to be a can't miss. Bold prediction time. I've got four, two on offense, two on defense, plus a final score prediction for the team. The first prediction I have, the run game is going to accumulate 200 yards. You borderline have to. This is something that I think needs to be very standard for the team, is getting well above that 100-yard mark. That is That should be a bad week for you is only 100 yards. You hopefully, with the amount of talent you have at running back and a mobile quarterback, should be able to just generate yards like it's nobody's business. That should be your goal. Against NAU, come out and establish that this is going to be the biggest strength of your team and that you want this to be the built identity for yourself as well. I have a feeling they can definitely do that. Would not be surprised they have a 100-yard rusher between Nagata and Valade and Jones. Second, Emory Jones is going to throw two touchdowns. I'm not willing to say he's going to throw 200 yards or 300 yards, but I do think that he's going to prove that he can be a factor in the passing game. Not necessarily as this like game-changing, you know, Patrick Mahomes kind of guy, but I think he can establish himself in this game as someone that you still need to respect his passing ability. He's got some decent weapons too, like Messiah Swinson, that six foot eight body in the back of the end zone is going to be really tough to stop. You've got the potential of some other touchdown playmakers as well. Maybe Brian Thompson can stretch the field. Andre Johnson can stretch the field. Elijah Badger can stretch the field. Maybe Cam Johnson can get creative after the catch the way that we've seen him do so many times at Vanderbilt. There's plenty of playmakers here for Arizona State. Oh, and you have Valade to catch balls out of the backfield. He could also be a guy who could find himself in the end zone. Defensively now, uh, the pass rush is able to grab five sacks. I think Trevez Moore is going to be one of the most important guys in generating pressure in this game. But I also believe that the pass rush entirely is going to have itself a pretty good day against whatever the uh, whatever whatever the, the NAU Lumberjacks are trying to prepare on offense. I think that the Sun Devils should be able to answer the call against, you know, very low level competition. There truly isn't a reason to not be able to just rush the heck out of the passer. Finally, I think that Corey Bethley is going to get his first turnover as a Sun Devil, whether that's an interception or a forced fumble. Bethley is a playmaker. He had five interceptions a year ago uh, for his last season in Hawaii. He was 99 tackle guy. He just finds the football and he's like a magnet to it. And he has the ability to create those turnovers. So I feel like he is going to be able to find a way against low level competition to make a name for himself very early on. Again, you know, he doesn't have that quote unquote starting role for the team with Kawan Markham and Chris Edmonds getting the nods there, but you can absolutely anticipate that he's going to be a massive factor in this game. Look for lots of Corey Bethley and look for him to get his first turnover of the year. Final score prediction. I got ASU over NAU 34 to 17. I think this is going to be one of those games where ASU is going to be able to control the game for the most part. They're not going to necessarily blow out NAU. 17 points is a nice lead. It's a three possession game, but I don't see this being a 40 to 10 or a 50 to 10 football game. I also think that NAU is going to get a couple scores to just kind of frustrate fans and make you think like, come on, you sh- they, they shouldn't have been able to drive right down the field like that. But I just, I, I feel like ASU is just prone to having those kind of mistakes and with how new this defense is, it wouldn't be a surprise if, you know, Kevin Daniels was going to be able 
to make some uh, nice plays for NAU, maybe find his way into the end zone once or twice, and just NAU overall, I'm able to make a couple splash plays that you wish you didn't have to see. That's my predictions. That's my analysis. And that's a breakdown of the roster for the team. And that does it for this edition of the Locked On Sun Devils podcast. So thank you guys so much for making us your first listen of the day. Remember, we're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, if you want to check us out in a visual platform. Of course, wherever you do get those podcasts, though, make sure you hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content, which is Monday through Friday. To stay in touch with all our content, make sure you're following me on Twitter at RichieBrad36 and follow the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Until next time, guys, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devils.